Good morning children. I am your subject teacher of biology, Ms. Shonali Banerjee. Children, you all are aware of the current situation which is going on. But due to this situation, we cannot waste our precious time and hence let us start our class 9 biology lesson through these learning videos. So let us start our lesson. The chapter we are going to start today is chapter 2, Cell, the unit of life. Children, you all have heard about the term cell in your previous classes, isn't it? So, what is cell? What do you mean by a cell? The cell is the fundamental structural and functional unit of all living beings. What does structural and functional mean? Structural means if we take any part of the body of a frog or any other animal or plant and see it under a microscope. You will see a cellular structure that means it is formed of cells and hence structural. Why functional? Because any function in the body of a plant or an animal is due to the activity in its cell. For example, if we talk of our digestive system, this digestive system functions, digests the food as well as absorbs the digested food because of the activity of the cells. The cell is the fundamental structural and functional unit of life. What does this mean? Why structural and why functional? Structural because if we take any part of an animal or a plant and observe it under a microscope, we will be able to see a cellular structure. That means it is formed of cells and hence structural. Why functional? Because any function in the body of an animal or a plant is due to the activity in its cells. For example, if we consider our digestive system, the digestion as well as absorption of food in our body is due to the activity of the cells of the digestive system. That's why functional. We also know that cell is the smallest part of the body of an organism which is capable of independent existence means it doesn't require anyone else. It is fully capable of living by itself and performing the essential functions of life. Cells are microscopic and hence cannot be seen with an un aided eye means some microscope or any other instrument is required to see the cells. All organisms including our cells that is human beings start life as a single cell which is called the zygote means we when develop in our mother's womb we do not we are not a baby there first the cell uh, from which a baby is formed is called the zygote. The zygote divides numerous times by the process of mitosis that is a cell division and we are formed. And hence all organisms including ourselves start life as a single cell called zygote. Come to the next topic of the lesson that is invention of microscope. The first microscope was constructed by a Dutch scientist called Antony van Uyenhoek. 
the microscope which he constructed had a single biconvex lens and were called the simple microscope and one more thing that antony van leeuwenhoek constructed nearly 400 microscope isn't it so it is a great number the other person who constructed microscope was robert hook and he used two lenses and naturally two lenses means the magnification will be much greater and these microscope which were constructed by robert hook were later known as the compound microscope in hook's microscope the object to be seen was placed on the stage below and the light from an oil flame was thrown on it by means of a concave mirror so this was their working children just now we were talking about the microscopes constructed by leuwen hook and robert hook so here are two images of the two microscopes constructed by both of them the first one which you can see is the leuwen hook's one here you can see the diagram which is given sideways the lens which is there and the specimen holder is just behind it so the specimen which has to be seen was placed in the specimen holder and the screw which is there is used to move the specimen up and down so that a clear view is achieved the next one that is robert hook's microscope you can see the stage is there and in the stage the specimen was placed and through the upper portion of the microscope the specimen was observed coming to the next topic children the discovery of cell hook while examining a thin slice of cork under his microscope observed that it was made up of tiny box like compartments piled up together and these piled up boxes somewhat looked like a honeycomb structure you have i think all of you have seen honeycomb how hexagonal pieces are attached just piled one up upon another in a similar way he saw piled up boxes this reminded him of the rooms of a monastery and hence named them cells the cells which hook saw were all dead cells and were not at all living cells there is a very important thing we should remember so let us start our lesson the chapter we are going to start today is chapter 2 cell the unit of life children you all have heard about the term cell in your previous classes isn't it so what is cell what do you mean by a cell the cell is the fundamental structural and functional unit of all living beings what does structural and functional mean structural means if we take any part of the body of a frog or any other animal or plant and see it under a microscope you will see a cellular structure that means it is formed of cells and hence structural why functional because any function in the body of a plant or an animal is due to the activity in its cell for example 
if we talk of our digestive system this digestive system functions digests the food as well as absorb the digested food because of the activity of the cells now let us see how numerous and how small cells are larger the organism greater the number of cells in its body for example if you are talking about single celled animals i hope all of you are aware of a single celled animal like amoeba bacteria all they are, these uh, organisms are single celled animals so many small plants and animals are made up of just one single cell coming to few celled animals some very small plants and animals are made up of relatively few cells just a few hundred or few thousands examples are volvox which are formed in a colony and spirogyra which is filamentous algae you know about spirogyra you have read about spirogyra in the lower classes i think in class 8 itself you read about this the multicelled animals like human beings an average adult human constitutes about 37.2 trillion cells in the whole body can you imagine uh, the huge number of cells we have in our body so cells are very small and are seen only with the microscope smallest cells are the bacteria largest cell are the birth egg and the longest cell are the nerve cell i want to clarify one thing children smallest cell are the bacteria that is true but if you are talking about the smallest one it is mycoplasma the spelling is m y c o p l a s m a okay that is the smallest one means smaller than bacteria also it is between the virus and the bacteria nearly it has a uh, size of 0.1 mu largest cells are bird sac but the largest among that is the ostrich sac and the longest as you know are the nerve cell and the nerve cells uh, as you know are uh, the composite part of the nervous system in all living organisms students the topic which we will discuss now is a very important one that is smallness of cells a greater efficiency which means because of the small size of the cells its efficiency is highly increased the two main reasons why cells remain small in size are that different regions of the cell can communicate with each other rapidly for cell to cell functioning effectively now think if the cell is very big naturally some material to go from one part of the cell to the other will take a little bit of time but if a cell is very small the compounds for example which are absorbed or the materials which are absorbed can be easily taken from one part of the cell 
to the other. So that is the meaning of the first point. Coming to the second point, which is a very important one. Cells have large surface area by volume ratio, which is very important for the greater diffusion of substances in and out of the cell. To explain this second point, we would go now to the next slide. It will be much more clear when I explain with these diagrams. Students, in this slide you can see there are two cubes I have placed here. One has the sides, each side is one centimeter, all the sides. That is the length, breadth, all the sides. And the bigger one has 2 cm. Each side is 2 cm in length. Length, breadth, height, everything. Now, you can see here that in the first one, I have written area is equal to 6a square. That is, the area of a cube we take out in the form of this formula, 6a square. In the next line, you can see I have written 1 that is, what is 1 here? 1 centimeter into 1 centimeter. That is the size. Into 6 sides. Because in a cube, how many sides are there? 6 sides are there. That's why 1 by 1 by 6 sides. It is coming to 6 centimeter square. That is, the area is coming to 6 centimeter square for the first one. Similarly, we see the volume of this same cube. We take out the volume of a cube in the with the formula side cube. What is the length of each side? 1 centimeter, all the sides. So 1 into 1 into 1. That is 1 centimeter cube is the volume. So what is the surface area by volume? You can see just below the uh, small cube, I have written A is to V. What does A signify? The surface area. What does V signify? The volume. So the surface area by volume ratio is 6 is to 1. Coming to the next one. The next cube. In this cube you can see all the sides are of 2 cm. That is all the sides measure 2 cm in length. And you know in a cube all the sides are of same length. So if we take out in a similar process the area of this bigger cube, what we see that 2 into 2 into 6 sides, which is coming to 24 cm square. Likewise, when we take out the volume of this bigger cube, it is 2 into 2 into 2 because all the sides are uh, uh, 2 cm in length. That's why 2 into 2 into 2, that is 8 cm cube. So, we see if we simplify 24 is to 8, it is coming to 3 is to 1. So, if we compare the area, surface area by volume ratio of the smaller cube and the bigger cube, can you see the difference? See, the volume remains same in both the cases. But in the smaller cube, the surface area is highly increased than the bigger cube. So, we can conclude that the smaller the cell, the bigger it is, is its efficiency. Hence, if the surface area is big, see the volume is same in both the cases, but the surface area is much more bigger in the smaller cube. So, if the surface area is bigger in the smaller cube, then what will happen? The diffusion of substances in and out of the cell will be very much easier and it will be highly increased, greater than the bigger one. So, this is the Full description of the second point that why smallness of cells increases its efficiency. Students of standard 9, this is all for today's lesson. I will get back to you with the second lesson very soon. So get prepared with the first lesson which I just now gave you so that it becomes easy for you to understand the second lesson when I am with you.